Hey guys, today I got a special guest from New York. He's one of the guys from way back. He's about two generations behind me. Uh, his name is Jimmy Calamandria, good friend, good guy. He interests me a lot and I wanted to talk to him. You know the stories when I was young and I was in the rampers and you know a lot of the stories about the rampers. You're even going to hear more of them. These guys here were from Beth Avenue. They were called the Beth Beach guys. They had stories very, very similar to the rampers. That neighborhood, like I told you, was infested with the mafia. And guys, young guys, when they grew up, they uh, joined gangs and eventually became in the mafia. And Jimmy's no different than that. Now, I think there's some of my experiences that actually come into your life. You were at Tally's a couple of times, right? When you were yes. younger? I used to visit Tally's with Georgie Chipo mm. on Tuesday nights. I thought that's where I knew you, but I wasn't 100% sure. And I uh, ran into you a couple of times in the neighborhood, stuff like that. You were one of the guys uh, that ran the neighborhood at the time when I was a kid. Well, you said that um, you bought me a bottle of champagne. I don't really remember the details of that, but uh, I think you're fucking lying, bro. I don't remember <laughs> no fucking champagne. You lying, motherfucker? That was uh, 1988. At that time, I think uh, you were meeting Tommy Karate. We were on the corner yes. on Bay 23rd, me and my friends. Right. And we sent you over a bottle of champagne from the boys from Bay 23rd. Right, right. And I recall that. I wasn't sure. But, yeah, that, that's... We were meeting with Tommy Karate at the time. Yes. Right, right. A couple of people send me messages about you, and that's another reason why I had you here today. Plus, I hear you got a lot of fucking money, so <laughs> I brought you here <laughs> so I could shake you down a little bit. <laughs> so explain a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm from the same neighborhood as you, Sammy, Beth Avenue, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. I grew up on Beth Avenue all my life. As you know, our neighborhood was a recruitment center for young kids. And uh, we were on record with uh, the Bonanno crime family. And uh, what we did was we committed crimes at a young age, whether it was bank robberies, uh, stealing cars, robbing homes, and then eventually committing murders. We did things for the families. We also did some personal murders for ourselves. Before I went to prison in 1990, I heard of them. I knew some of them, but their reputation preceded them. They were tough. They were honorable. There was quite a few of them. I told you one time that in the ramp is we all did this tattoo. I guess it was a thing that everybody did. I had this little diamond on my center of my chest, and uh, some of the main rampers had that. Jimmy's guys had tattoos, and I guess he could explain that better than me. So our gang was the Bay Avenue crew. Our leader was Paulie Galino. What we did was we all got numbers on our legs, on our ankles. He was the number one. I was number two. Tommy Reynolds was number three. Fabrizio was number four. Then we had two other guys that were Paulie Galino's goons. Uh, Anthony Gonzalez was number six. Mikey and me was number five, and then eventually we got Joey Calco, he was number seven. But in the course of this time, you know, we were committing crimes. Uh, going back from when we were kids, and then eventually I went away for a bank robbery. And then when I, was, when I went away, my best friend ended up killing my other friend. Well, I, I understand that story, I heard that story, I knew what happened in that story. He wanted to become a made guy. Anthony Spiro was the police of the family, and they had words. He pushed Anthony, roughed him up a little bit in this conversation. And in the mafia, as you know now, he literally signed his death certificate. Yes. So while you were away, 
how did it actually occur? Who got orders and what happened? Well, what happened was we were having uh, problems with some kids from the other neighborhoods. And uh, we were in a little trouble. Paulie G wanted to uh, retaliate on these kids. And uh, he went to Anthony Sparrow. He wasn't happy with Sparrow. Uh, he had a conversation with Anthony Sparrow. And uh, he ended up pushing him. And uh, that's when he signed his death certificate. And uh, my own friends uh, knocked on his door one day and uh, ended up killing him. Well, it must have been a nightmare then. You were young, you were growing up, you got all these tattoos. It was you guys against the world. I know that feeling. I know I went through the same exact thing. But later on, I got to understand Goza Nostra, and I'm sure you do now at this point. That's the life. You do something like that, you're destined to go. And he went. It's a shame. and uh, But it splits you up a little bit. And I think that you had made some threats from the prison. You were so fucking mad or so frustrated about this thing that you were threatening your own friends' lives. Well, when I was away, what happened was I went to Lewisburg Penitentiary at the age of 23. And I became good friends with a, friend, with a guy named Manny Madonna. And uh, he was with the Lucchese family. So as a maid guy? He wasn't a maid guy at the time. When he went home, he was maid. Mm -hmm. He got straightened out when he got home. And then he ended up became, becoming a boss quickly. So I told him my problems when I was in Lewisburg. And uh, when I got home, he eventually went with me to Anthony Sparrow and Joe Benanti. And they released me to him. And now he's on record with the Lucchese family. So I wanted to get away from my friends. Right. Because eventually, you know, we were going to bunk heads and probably kill each other. Right, right. Same thing happened to me in the Colombo family. When I went in, I had trouble with Shorty's brother, Ralph Spiro. I actually went to kill him, and that resulted in me being transferred from the Colombo family to the Gambino family. So you have a similar story than, than me in, in a way. And that's what really drove me to this meeting to understand you more. So if you make it out of this fucking meeting, <laughs> <laughs> we could still talk about it. <laughs> My son is over there, a couple of shooters are outside, so be careful what the fuck you say. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me down. I appreciate it. I enjoy being in your company, and Good. hopefully I get Good. to learn a Good. few things from you. You know, I know you're thinking about writing a book, Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, I've been writing a book for a long time now. Uh, I have a couple of journals I wrote in prison. It's basically on uh, my life growing up on Bad Avenue, uh, looking up to wise guys and then putting it underneath their wing and putting us on record with them and uh, committing crimes and uh, losing some friends. Uh, you know, I robbed a few banks. Uh, I was involved in a few murders, uh, a lot of crimes. The book is very interesting. You know, it's basically just a bunch of young kids uh, screwing up their lives and uh, not realizing, uh, you know, what we were doing at the time. It sounds like it's going to be a great book. I'm sure it's going to be a big seller. I know part of your history and part of your story and with your friends. I'm sure it's going to be a great book. You got to promise me that I got a, a signed copy right away, first uh, out of the box. Absolutely. My man. So this was a, a, a great meeting. My son's over there smiling at me. You know, and he, he grew up in the same neighborhood. He knows a lot of your friends, uh, Chris, and, you know, he yes. comes from the same area with all you guys uh, from uh, Staten Island. Who was it? The Staten Island boys. And, the same as a lot yes. of the, a lot of you guys were mixed together. You went on scores together and did all kinds of yes. things. So my son and my daughter knows quite a few of you. So it's weird that they, we have like three generations of people coming from the same neighborhood. We talk alike. We think alike a little bit. And uh, it's a pleasure just to sit and talk to you. We chatted for a while. Pleasure that you're down here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. And just... Uh... Just don't kill me. <laughs>
a thousand, a thousand dollars, and then you could go home. <laughs> All right, bro. Listen, people, it's we're joking and we're laughing, but we're stone serious about everything that's going on. And uh, he's a great guy. You're going to see a hell of a lot more, when, as far as I'm concerned, a lot more Jimmy with me on some of my shows. I would really like to have him around and, you know, do some positive things with him. So I'm going to say adios, motherfucker.